Hey Titans, this is Mordecai from GamerTitan.com. In this video, we're going to be going over how to set up a nav mesh inside of your core game. Now, if you don't have a core account yet and you would like to create your own games for free, go ahead and click the link in the description down below to go ahead and create a free core account. Now, as a disclaimer, I will make a little bit commission if you go ahead and sign up through my link, but it's greatly appreciated. Now, a lot of you may be asking, what is a nav mesh? The short answer is, is if you have any type of AI that is using Standard Combo's NPC kit, if there is no nav mesh, the NPCs are unaware of collider walls and, and stuff like that throughout your game. And so if you don't have a nav mesh, what will happen is a lot of times is they can just simply run through the wall. So a nav mesh is a mapping system basically that allows the AI to know where they can and cannot actually move. And so if you set up the nav mesh correctly, you will not see the AI just randomly floating through the wall. Now, if you're using the RPG or the uh, dungeon crawler framework, it comes with a nav mesh out the gate. So we go into the hierarchy and search nav mesh. We'll be able to find it here. We're going to open this up. So the nav mesh, let me turn off these uh, gizmos. So the nav mesh is this gray, this dark gray paneling here. And so this is all server side, meaning only the server is aware of these. And so the AI is aware of these panels. So the actual player, when we click play, the player will not be able to see it. Now, if I click play real quick in preview, go in here. So I can see it right now because I am in just normal preview mode. And so in normal preview mode, you are both the client and the server. And so if you see this, don't be concerned. So as an example, if I switch over to multiplayer preview and fire this up real quick, we shouldn't be able to see the nav mesh on the ground. We'll go in here. And we can see that even though in the editor we have the visibility of the nav mesh turned on, because it's server side, we're not able to see it. So if you wanted to adjust the nav mesh, so as an example, say that we got rid of this right here, all we'd have to do is we could either copy and paste a new panel and we just want to align it just like that so now because we got rid of something we're allowing the AI to walk wherever this gray paneling is now obviously if you wanted to add something you'd have to do the opposite so if you add something you want to make sure that there's a little bit of spacing in between the nav mesh itself and the collision object so this nav mesh is from waffle and this nav mesh is great because it allows you to visually see the exact path that they can take however if you are using a larger map where you may not necessarily want to create all these individual panels um, there's another nav mesh from true dark dev called dd pathfinder and so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab that from community content. So you just search DD Pathfinder, go ahead and click import. You click yes, we'll save the project. And this one's a little bit different. So you actually don't have to manually add the panels. What this one will do is you set it up in a trigger zone. We'll go ahead and do this. Close this. So we want to drag both of these in to our project. And inside of the nav mesh generator is this nav mesh area. So we'll need to turn on triggers again so we can see it. And there's a lot of triggers in this project, but this is it right here. So as an example, we'll move this one back. We'll move the entire thing. And we'll make the trigger smaller real quick. Now this is where the player spawns. There's no AI that should actually be 
hanging out in this area. So it wouldn't make much sense to make an ad mesh here, but I'm just going to show you how this is set up. So what we need to do is we will need to turn on the event log. So if by default you don't have this turned on, what you do is you go into window and you find event log right here. You go ahead and check it to turn it on. So now that we have this nav mesh trigger right here, what we'll do is when we click play, we'll start seeing in our event log that it started calculating and generating the nav mesh. So what it does is, try to make this a little bit bigger. After it generates the nav mesh for you, what it does is it spits out this line right here. So what you need to do is copy it from your event log Go ahead and pause the game and inside of the sorry, my windows are all messed up here so we copy this line from the event log we go into the dd nav mesh generator server under the dd nav mesh generator and we'll see in the required scripts here there's this dd nav mesh data store so we go ahead and click on edit here and what we do is we just simply paste this line of code right in there and save it. And now our nav mesh has been generated. So what we can do is if we want to be able to see the actual nav mesh generated, what we can do is go to DD Pathfinding Manager and turn on debug and we can turn on verbose debug. So ver verbose debug gives a little bit more information. It kind of shows the pathing that the AI will do. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. There's no actual AI here, so they're not gonna actually path. But what we'll do is go, go ahead and click play here. And we can see that in our trigger, we have this pink mesh here. And this is what was created from inside of the trigger zone. So as you can see, this is a bit easier. It's something that I've used in Heroborn and Hazard Pay. There is a few gotchas with using this nav mesh. One of which is if we regenerate, we get the nav mesh here, the trigger, we expand it. So because there's a collider wall right here, right in the middle of the nav mesh, and there's no actual path to this side, It'll still create the nav mesh, but there will be what's called islands. And so the islands are, is the nav mesh will be on this side of the wall and on this side of the wall. And there is the potential that the AI will try and jump from this side of the nav mesh to this, which will ultimately allow them to go back through the wall. And I'll show you how to deal with that problem. But first, let's go ahead and show you the actual problem itself. If we click preview, it's going to regenerate the nav mesh because we changed the trigger. And now we can see that it created the nav mesh. And you can kind of see that right here, it ends. And on this side, here it is again. So it actually worked this time, but like I said, there is the chance that the AI is able to jump through. So what you want to do is obviously that you don't want the actual AI to be in this area so what we would actually do is put the trigger actually oops don't know what i just clicked there we go we want to move the nav mesh generator as a whole put it in the middle here and we'll make the trigger zone bigger because we want to get the entire play area where the actual AI will be. And we'll go ahead and generate this nav mesh. And the larger the trigger box is and the more complex, like how many different collider walls and stuff like that is in between, the nav mesh will actually take a little bit longer to generate. So as you can see, this one is taking a bit longer. Um, for a game such as Hazard Pay, I believe it took like 15 to 20 minutes. But to do that manually would have taken a lot longer. So what we'll do is go back into the DD nav mesh generator, go into the DD nav mesh data store. I'm 
And my computer's lagging for some reason. Go ahead and delete the old one. Paste in the new one. Click save. It should be finished right away. And once again, how we can see it working is if we go in here, we'll see that the nav mesh pretty much aligned up with the gray, uh, which is Waffles nav mesh. So the pink is True Dark Devs nav mesh, and the gray is the default uh, made by Waffle. So it created all this. Now the problem is, is right here. We open up this, I'll go ahead and spawn a mob, and then I'll run back over here. I think they're actually set up to despawn, so that's actually a good thing. But let's try and grab this one right here. Alright, well their their leash is too small. But basically what would happen is is they would try and jump through here if they were able to follow. So what you would want to do is when you're actually generating this, this nav mesh, you would want to get rid of any colliders to, so like for example, if you wanted for whatever reason to have the nav mesh here and here, temporarily you would want to go ahead and delete this wall. Um, a better example is say that you have a door that would be opened when you're actually fighting that mob but it's closed until the mob is spawned, you would want to make sure that even though the door collider is there, you would you would want to turn it off when you actually bake the nav mesh. So that's really the only got you with this. Um, a few other settings real quick is there's this thing called remove islands. And so what remove islands is, is if you have a more linear map so right now if we click play and click pause i guess that won't work we can see that there's multiple of these nav meshes so the other option is to use remove islands and so remove islands basically would take out any nav mesh any area of the nav mesh that isn't connected. So that's really good for linear maps because it makes sure that you don't have any of these random nav meshes between walls and stuff that the, the AI could technically jump through. They wouldn't really jump through this wall per se, but like if there's other areas that are a bit smaller that they could potentially get past, I don't have a good example, unfortunately, in this map at the moment. But there is areas that if it's if it's close enough together, they will go ahead and try and jump across. And so using the remove island feature, so if we find the island remover, what we'll do is we'll put it in this middle one right here. And what this does is if the, sorry, got to move this a bit more. What this will do is if the nav mesh isn't able to connect to this point here, it'll go ahead and destroy it. So what will end up happening is, is we will only generate this middle nav mesh. So if we go here and check, so under the DD nav mesh generator, if we click on remove islands here, I'm guessing that's what the problem is. So to do that, we'll just simply d destroy that line of code in the DD nav mesh data store. Go ahead and click preview mode again to let it regenerate. This might have to actually remove, the island might have to be removed as it's generating. Alright, so we can copy this code again. Go ahead and paste that there. So you have the nav mesh there, and there's no nav mesh there. So that was the issue. It needs to be regenerated if you do want to remove islands. So once again, what this does is it makes a little bit more of a stable nav mesh 
and then it also makes it where you're not generating a nav mesh like way outside here so as an example this wall is here and you need to make the trigger box all like the entire map by using remove islands it wouldn't use the nav mesh here because even though it's inside the trigger box as long as it wasn't if it's not connected to the the island marker if there's no path it go, it just goes ahead and destroys it so if we wanted to actually have the nav mesh work on both sides we would once again have to remove some colliders you want to be careful with that because if you do that and then you bake the nav mesh and then you add the wall back the nav mesh will assume that that doesn't exist and ai on this side will be able to walk to this side so both nav meshes have their pros and cons for a dungeon such as this waffles implementation is is better because it gives you more control but if you're using like a terrain like a large area then the uh, dd pathfinder by true dark dev might be better for you now once again there is a performance hit for using nav meshes so just be aware of that that it makes each ai a bit more expensive simply because they're having to do more checks to make sure that they're actually able to path a certain way and there is some downfalls that if they if for whatever reason your nav mesh gets messed up they can get stuck so just keep that in mind that you want to make sure that your nav mesh no matter which one you're using if it's the one from true dark dev or from waffle that the nav mesh is actually connected each each way as in if this is the path you want them to take there needs to be it needs to be connected all the way through like if this for example was like that then it would break the entire nav mesh they would only be able to walk on this side or they'd be able to walk on this side now there is a chance that they try and jump across but you want to try and avoid that you want to make sure that everything lines up and is touching from panel to panel and then with true dark devs you want to make sure that you visually run through your map after you bake an ab mesh and just make sure that everything's working so hopefully this video was helpful if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments down below and if you want more core related content please hit that subscribe button and i will catch you next time